I didn't think I'd be reviewing another car. But having recently purchased our 2019 Jetta this year, my mother was in need of a new car, and I thought that perhaps a Volkswagen would be good for her. She lives up north here, and she wanted something that was more like an SUV. We started looking at the Tiguan as a possibility. She liked the interior of my wife's car. My wife's is the uh, S trim because she wanted the manual transmission. My mother's not looking for a manual transmission, but she didn't like all of the extra uh, odds and ends that you find in a car. And yet the S had so much stuff that came with ours that we got into uh, looking at these and eventually made this purchase for an extremely good price. There are a couple of things that we did require living up north here. So I wanted to talk about all the features that came with this. The 2018 and 2019 of this model are basically identical, except for the price. The, the 19 is actually slightly cheaper. I think there's one extra USB port and it did not have the thousand dollars off and 1.9% APR financing. That was the only difference. So I wanted to do another review so I could talk about all the features found in this car because believe it or not, for the S, this one actually had a couple of more uh, knickknacks in the car than we would find in the 19 Jetta. So let's get started. For those who haven't followed the theme of my videos from before, it's kind of like, wow, look at all of the standard features you get in the baseline model. And this is a TSI 4 motion. This is a four wheel drive. It has a computerized controlled uh, traction control and settings that are available to the driver. This is different from the regular S model. I'm gonna get into the specifics of this option later. You can see one thing that sticks out immediately is the uh, 17 inch alloy rims. This brake's pretty much a, a standard feature on all cars today. Worth pointing out because on the rear of a lot of cars, you do see drums still. We take a look under the hood. And this is the two liter turbocharged engine. And this comes standard with the eight speed automatic transmission. Windshield sprayer and coolant, engine oil, brake fluid. I bet Castrol paid a lot of money to get their name all over the marketing of this car on all of the paperwork materials, right down to the oil fill cap on this thing. Interesting note here, check that out, 0W20. Where the fog lights would usually be found on this model, there are blackouts shown here. Regular headlights and high beams are here. Here's the daytime running lights. And we can see that even with the headlights off, the daytime running lights, the LEDs are running. The headlights just kicked on, so this is what it looks like with the headlights and the daytime running lights. They both run in unison. While the S model does not have the blind spot signaling built into the mirror, it does have the blinkers built into the mirror. About every car today, including this car, you have you know, remote entry. Again, I don't, I don't know if the standard on all cars, but we're talking about this car. You have standard uh, central electronic locks, standard uh, electric windows all around, standard... Uh, uh, electric mirrors to uh, set the mirror configurations. It is also heated mirrors, I should also point out. You could turn on the heating of those mirrors by the push of a button, and this comes standard with this car. That's pretty cool. This is not on the Jetta. This is the first time I've ever seen the heated mirrors, especially on S-Line. This car came uh, with the upgraded winter mats. These are not the standard mats. This was just a a dealer option that was thrown in for free. Uh, they also come with the guides that hold the mats into place. It's built into the car. There are regular uh, mats, the same texture as the carpet emblazoned with a Tiguan logo that uh, did not come with the car because we got these. I think these are a better choice for New England. Probably the only thing out of uh, this car as well as my wife's uh, Jetta S that I truly miss is the inability to have um, electric adjustable seats on the driver's side. So these are manual seats and they are the full uh, adjustable in all directions. However, it is not with the, with the joystick that does it. Uh, to further uh, add to the disappointment, this car does have uh, identification of the driver by key. So when I uh, drop the key in it knows that it's my mother driving and sets up the configuration for her That said the configuration doesn't really do a whole lot because on the higher end models Obviously that do have the electric seats It would automatically adjust the seat just for her and if I were to put a key in for me It would adjust that seat for me So one of the biggest features of the ability to identify the driver 
is lost in that regard. And this brings me to another thing. Uh, the S line only comes with fabric seats. There are two options for colors. This one is gray. Uh, the S line also does not have seat heaters. And this was kind of the thing we were uh, back and forth on the fence with because fabric doesn't uh, pass energy uh, through the seats like, like leather does or, or pleather. So they really don't get that cold. Right, so we're sitting in it, we're driving around this morning, it was about 25 degrees, and the heat turned on the car relatively quick. We found that we really didn't think about the fact that the seats were cold and save the money. I told her if it became a real issue and she really wanted seat heaters, we would go out and, and have the seats upgraded. They throw in the heaters really nice, put in the nice switches like it never happened, but I don't think she's going to miss them. And if she wants them, we'll throw them in. I'm pretty adamant about not having the sunroof. We didn't want that on this car. And if you get the sunroof, it does not have the glasses holder. Of course, we have uh, the standard complement of lights up front. This S also includes the light that turns on when you open the mirrors. This is not found in the Jetta, so I was pleasantly surprised to see this was found in the Tiguan. This comes with the, the baseline mirror. As you uh, upgrade, there's a mirror that comes with uh, the garage door opener built into the mirror. The one that has the garage door opener built in that's tied into the car, I think is, is perfectly okay, but the bolt-on one that has the batteries built in with the garage door opener, I, I really don't like a lot, and I've mentioned in my last video, if somebody breaks into your car and you have that kind of mirror, they could only just press the button to open your garage door. Between the uh, the glove box and the side panels here and and these things in the side, there, there's enough room to hold just about anything. As I keep making comparisons uh, with the S-Line with the Jetta, I wanted to point out again, this one does have uh, rear vents. So we can see that here, as well as provisions for uh, a cigarette lighter or 12-volt socket in the back, and an almost useless storage compartment, as we see here, the depth of which I believe is, is no more than uh, a couple inches, right? but you can open and close the vents. Obviously you can't control the, the climate, but that's nice that that includes that. This one also includes the standardized fitting uh, for child seats on both sides, this side, as well as that. Also has, if you're not using the middle seat, the pull down is available for a armrest uh, that has cup holders in it. These are all sorts of things that you are finding in the, in the base model of the 18 and 19 Tiguan that are not in the Jetta that pretty much complete all of the things that I had called out as previously missing from that line. The area is uh, very spacious. It does not have pockets up front here uh, on, the, on the S line. It doesn't have it on the Jetta either. And, and that's just fine. I was very impressed that it had these individual vents or, or any vents at all, as I had previously mentioned. The back seats also have independent switches for lights as well. So they did, take some time to provide for some animities for the backseat passengers on this car as with the Jetta they provided just about nothing. We've also got in addition the uh, actual OEM backseat covers you know for the kids so that they don't destroy the back seats and we'll be able to put the car seat in on top of this once this is installed. We're gonna be doing that later. The rear doors do have child lock switches to prevent children from opening the locks from the inside. View from the back seat provides a clear view up front, right? So not only getting the vent down here, but you know, access to the central vents in the middle there as well. So it's not stuffy and enclosed and claustrophobic in the back. It's a, a wide open space. Point out the standard uh, rear defroster on the back window. Also standard is the rear windshield wiper. Third brake light also in the rear as well. And with this, I'll get into the trunk. The button is, is just under the VW logo. We can see the camera is right there. The lights are LEDs. I've added this particular shade. This did not come with the car. Uh, the option for this was like $380, but it was like $80 on Amazon. I, I couldn't resist. And it's the exact same shade that comes from VW. That said, we could see that all three of the back seats uh, fold down individually, and we can see several tether points, one on each of the back seats, as well as all around the perimeter of the car, right? And we look this way, you can see other tether points here. VW does have a, a cargo net, 
We instead got this from the dealer. This is the Volkswagen Car Go protection system. I haven't looked at it a lot yet. It seems like to be like a Velcro system that just sits right over the original carpet like this. We've also received from the dealer uh, the roadside assistance kit as part of this car. We're going to be opening this up as well. The seat releases are over here. Here are the latches for them. There are more hooks to come down that are available to strap things down as needed. I'm assembling these together right now. Now we're going to set up a portion of the trunk where groceries could be put. There we go. I got it all set up. You drop the bag in and that's it. And, and things don't move because everything is now Velcroed together. So we're going to open up the roadside kit now. Seems to be a whole list of stuff here. I'm not going to tear open everything. I'm just going to move some stuff here just for a quick examination. There's a whole lot of things available in the roadside kit. Some jumpers and everything. Anything you would need if you, if you got broken down is all within the kit. So we're just going to put that back where it is, leave it in the car, and should it be needed, it's available. It's also kind of nifty. You look back here in the trunk, there is 12 volt service available. And also I have to point this out because you never know on the, on the S trim, right? Uh, thankfully, of course, there is a spare tire. It is a uh, 80 kilometer an hour spare. It is a 50 mile an hour tire. It's not like on the S line where you get the can of gas to go and refill uh, the busted out tire, but there's no actual tire in the in the, uh, in the the trunk. That said, uh, you could always get the option for the donut if you chose to. This one comes with all of the things required to raise the car off of the ground, as well as uh, the tow hook, uh, the special key for the uh, cap remover, for the uh, pieces on the rim, uh, as well as the lug remover as well, right? Sitting here in the styrofoam material, and then it just unscrews from there. No worries at all. And I do believe that this will hold the, uh, the tire that's being removed. Uh, I don't know if this will fully close all the way if that happens, but that's it's hardly an issue, right? It just it gets you home or, or whatever to change your tire. Don't know what this little bungee cord is for. Right? I don't know why that's there, but I'm going to point out that little bungee cord. Also, I'm going to point out something else that I don't know what its purpose is. I'm going to just come clean here. These things slide up, right, and out. And I don't know what they do. So if anybody knows what that is, I'm going to, I'm going to lift it out again. And I'm going to show you. And it's got some, some rubber material. It's like a finished, finished plastic piece right here for the trunk somehow. And they see very nicely right in there. There also seems to be some mechanics up front here on the forward portion. Here's the tire you can see up there. I don't know what the purpose of that is. Some sort of locking mechanism on that. And I, I don't know why it's there or what it does. Maybe it's for another model. Furthermore, there's a storage compartment right here that is empty. And I don't know what that is for storage for. And this aluminum trunk protection plate here is an option. This is a dealer option, and I've had that added onto the car. This does not come in the S line. This comes in the uh, higher models. Not only does that protect the uh, trunk, I think I think it spruces up the bumper a bit because there's just just too much gray in the back without anything else. So I do like the uh, dual chrome exhaust, though. I think it's really nice, really classy how they implemented the exhaust on this. Car also comes standard with a fully telescopic steering wheel. Uh, turning that latch down allows this steering wheel to come up and down in and out like shown we can't hit the setup button there is a uh an ability to type in all sorts of information given the particular driver or configuration wizard right you go through the wizard to automatically set up everything for that particular individual this is the same across all sorts of vw's factory information ability to upgrade software this is something i'd have her take her to the dealership for if she had any problem uh, again it, it has a standard radio as well AM FM radio that found all of the stations already in here. She could just choose her stations. They've been saved. Manual old school dial has been added as well. Media also has amongst the USB an SD card. I've never put one in ours to check, but you can pop an SD card in there. She's got her. All of her songs, I put all her CDs on an iPhone, 
So she just uses iTunes as built in with the with the Apple Play. So she likes that and, and that works out well for us too. At home, we use the Apple Play on the iTunes. We don't plug in any SD cards into our car. You can see the vehicle status is telling us that the uh, door is open. It's actually the hood, the front hood is open. So that's just fine, I popped it before. The steering wheel has a full complement of controls. Uh, the left side is, is almost completely dedicated to uh, cruise control as you can see here as well as the volume control for the, uh, the radio. Golf carts of Manchester. You can see it right there. So as you're driving along, obviously, it's very natural to be able to control the radio like that. And that's good, uh, especially if you don't want people taking their hands off the wheels. Again, just like she was controlling the volume from the left side, she could uh, control the radio from the right. The steering wheel allows for this provision. When the Apple Play is connected, uh, we have Siri is available right here. So just ask Siri to do stuff and hang up the phone. Just a, just a ton of features available. There's no need to let go of the steering wheel anymore to do anything. And the stereo sounds really good. There's, I don't, I don't even know how many speakers. I think it's a, a six speaker system. It's really good sound in stereo. So half of this is standard and half of this is part of the upgrade for motion. So I'm gonna go through it. Uh, on like a Jetta S, there's two modes. There's regular driving and there's echo for economy. So if I hit the mode button, it takes us here to the screen where I could then keep on pressing that mode button to go through the different uh, driving possibilities. So you could drive economically to save gas and it, it changes the shifting points. It changes the ignition timing, uh, all sorts of things to uh, uh, save fuel. Uh, on the higher end cars that have the Climatronic, it does stuff with the air conditioner to further save fuel. So I could go and, and keep cycling through that to get uh, the type that I want. Sport obviously is more sporty and uses more gas and what have you. And custom allows you to go through and uh, set a combination of what you would like to do, right? Different driving styles, depending on what you want. I'm gonna talk about the other knob right quick. This is not part of the base model. This is the four wheel drive traction control. So I'll go over this really quickly. If I turn this to a different setting, we can see that this is for driving in snow conditions and you could hit information that'll tell you about it, right? The steering and the drive system changes, probably a stiffer steering and what have you. Uh, there's probably places where you could gain specific information on this. Uh, there's normal, normal driving right again not a plethora of information right off-road driving conditions and off-road provides a lot of information right tells you all sorts of things that are going on if you're going to do off-road driving changing the suspension the steering and, and what have you and then we have off-road custom that allows you to go through a menu system to actually go and change the parameters to have a, a custom driving experience should you choose to do so right and that's what that is for but i just wanted to touch on that quickly uh, that's not part of the the base options, but I wanted to let you know that if you did get this four motion What that does right so I just set that back onto the regular right as long as it's on regular You'll see that the light is not illuminated. It's just running in normal mode With normal driving and that's how it's set up for now in inclement weather My mother would probably shift it over to uh, to snow and that would probably be it for her Again, that and the four-wheel drive combination is what we were looking for. I do believe once you go one model up, there's no longer a key. It's just the fob and the push button and the automatic opening doors and the, and the auto unlocking doors and all those wonderful things. But this model does in fact have a key. One thing that's really annoying, and we have, we have the manual transmission one, is the, the auto engine stop feature when you, when you come to a traffic light and you, yeah, you could disable it, right? So here's the button you turn on and now it won't happen. And I'll show you what the screen says, right? So if you hit the button, it'll tell you that the start stop system is deactivated, probably because it's so extremely unpopular that nobody wants to use it. You hit the button again, it'll be reactivated, right? But you can get um, a device to hook into the computer to permanently deactivate it. It's a really stupid system. It doesn't really save any gas and it was used to to skirt some of the tests that's used to evaluate fuel consumption on these cars. And that's all it does and doesn't really do anything else. So I'm not really calling that a feature, I'm calling that a way around a really terrible idea. This is the parking brake. We have the same one on the Jetta and this is, oh my God. 
So I'm used to having the big handle you pull up on a manual. This is electric parking brake, so I'm just gonna... You can barely hear it, it just goes like that and it's engaged. And we can see a park light illuminated. Take the parking brake off, then put my foot on the brake. So I push my foot on the brake and that light went out. And then I could go and depress this to shut it off. And that's the only way to take off the parking brake after it's applied. I further want to state on the automatic, and I'm not very familiar with automatic, so that green light with the foot is obviously meant for the brake. But it's also letting you know that beyond the parking brake, I can't even take this out of park. It won't let me put it into reverse. I must have my foot on the brake like that. And now it'll go into reverse. This model has the uh, standard climate controls, doesn't have the climatronic. Right. Um, one thing I did notice, and I probably didn't notice this because I lived in Florida. If you turn it up to defrost just like this, the air conditioner turns on to dry the air for the front window in this setting. Turning on the air conditioner in this mode, if you turn it away from defrost, will turn off the uh, AC. So really cool standard feature on this car, on the S line, on every S that I've seen, is the rear camera. And it does take about five seconds before it goes back to regular mode. So it gives you a little grace period of the camera still running as you're in drive before it goes and switches back. So I'm gonna put it in drive. Now we're in drive. It's still showing the rear view camera and I'm moving forward, right? And now it moved back. The entertainment system on this car is exactly like all of the other S lines. It's got the slightly smaller screen. For us, for my mother, this was more than adequate. It supports uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and MirrorLink, so so all of the big phone systems work perfectly with this. Uh, you could plug your phone in, and all of your media works. Sending text messages by speaking, uh, talking to Siri, and what have you, is all built into this thing natively. You could flip drive over like that and shift through the gears manually like this. Really what you should have done is bought a stick shift and learned how to drive it. But hey, if this is what you gotta do to feel like you're cool, then by all means, go ahead and do this. For those not familiar with the uh, Apple CarPlay, I have it plugged in. And right now it's playing music in the background off the phone because it was set to do so. We can see what the uh, antenna connection is as well as the, the Wi-Fi because we're close to the house. I'm just demonstrating this from here because I'm touching the, the applications on the screen, sending text messages, uh, looking at apps, calling on the phone, listening to music as, as I was just before. What you could do when you're driving is obviously just use this button right here. Hey Siri, play random music. Playing all songs. Shuffled. And that's it. I don't know what it happens to be playing ABBA right now, right? Just playing shuffle music because I told it to. Hey Siri, directions to Jason's Bug Ranch in Winter Garden. Getting directions to Jason's Bug Ranch. So we have a little drive ahead of us. Starting route to Jason's Bug Ranch. So watch this, another demonstration. You're driving down the road, you have to send somebody something important. Send Steffi Rubin a message. Watch my video today on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and share. Your message to Steffi Rubin says, watch my video today on YouTube, like, subscribe, and share. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. So I've done all that without having to touch the radio or the cell phone. That's awesome. Oh, I got an incoming message from my wife. I wonder what it says. Got another incoming message from my wife. Wonder what it says. Hey Siri, read new messages from Steffi Rubin. Steffi Rubin sent you new messages. Good. How are you? Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? No. Okay. That's just a, a quick example how I could send text messages, uh, listen to text messages, talk on the phone, and everything without ever taking my hand off of the wheel or looking away from the road doing all of this stuff because the telephone is fully integrated with the car. All of the information is also available at this screen by using this button right here. We can see that as I press it, information can be right here. I could hit that. So I could watch fuel economy. 
and then push the up or down button here to see what type of economy I want. Do I want the average or the instantaneous oil temperature, uh, current speed, the average speed, the distance? All this stuff is built into the computer, it comes standard with this car. Like all VWs now, it has a Think Blue trainer in it. We haven't done any real highway driving to do any actual tests, a lot of city stuff. And the upfront service to me is sufficient. You have one USB charger that connects to the computer for CarPlay or Apple Play. And there's another cigarette lighter here that's used for somebody like a guest sitting in the passenger seat to charge their phone. I happen to have a dual charger plugged into that, right? But it does the job. So I got the VW Tiguan factory seat covers in came out nice they're not supposed to hermetically seal it. they're supposed to protect it from lollipops and ice cream cones and other kid fallout that occurs in the back of a car uh, i think it'll work and it also has provisions here for the baby seat so i'm going to install that with everything installed uh the car seat went in no problem at all uh this car having the standard car seat provisions uh this portion of the project is completed here's a view of the interior with the lights on uh, not too bright, not too intrusive. We could see the uh, the door panel lights, the lights on the steering wheel here, the dashboard, uh, center console, uh, lower center console, and then uh, very little going on here on the passenger door side. The backup camera, the lights in the rear also illuminating for the backup camera allows you to see what you're doing, which is obviously helpful in the nighttime. Again, driving forward, there's a little grace period before the camera switches off. What? There's the blinker flashing. The indicator is also shown so you can see it from within the car as well. So here we are just regular driving, uh, taking a look at the, the performance of the headlights. And they're they're adequate. They're not amazing, right? But but we're also driving here in, in New England. It's not an amazing amount of light that's provided. We're in a small, coming into a small city here where there's overhead street lights. So, it's really hard to tell. Right now we have the brights on and uh, shut the brights off. We'll take a look at the difference. So we can see, yeah, so th there's a difference we can see between the brights on and off here in the, in the darker roads here. To turn on the wipers, you, you have the first setting where you could uh, uh, set how often you want the wipers to cycle uh, with, the, with this button right here. This is also for the rain sensor in uh, model cars that support it. But a very gentle click back turns on the rear windshield wipers which is now on right if you push it back again it'll have the rear windshield sprayer but the rear windshield wipers running and then up one is the front and back like they're working in conjunction but then I could just bring it forward in any one of those settings just to shut off the rear windshield wiper All right so just a single click rear windshield wiper and off or rear windshield wiper and spray with rear windshield wiper right rear windshield wiper off and now just spray front windshield wiper right so that's how the wipers work and if I wanted the fast wipers I would go up a second click right like that and then the really fast wipers a second click like that I do however have a sneaking suspicion though that if your front windshield wipers are on and you put the car in reverse that the back windshield wipers do automatically turn on as such is the case the windshield wipers are currently so here the off position and you can hear the back windshield wipers are on so interesting uh feature if in fact that is a feature and we have not touched the windshield wiper control you can see the doors have automatically locked the front windshield wipers are still on the back ones have automatically shut off after coming out of reverse when the camera shut off so i i was not aware of this this wasn't in the documentation that i've seen but now we know in reverse when the front windshield wipers are on the back ones temporarily turn on uh, while you're backing up and the camera's on. Pretty cool. Finally, I'm gonna finish off in the freezing cold and the horrible rain to point out the locking gas cap that locks with the central lock we could see right here. Just push click to open and if the doors were locked, that would not be possible. The gas cap also uh, has a provision right here to sit here while you're fueling up the car. So little things account. Also, one thing I did notice is they have changed the gas cap, so it only requires one click now to lock the cap without turning on the mill light. So that's a definite positive upgrade. 
think this just about covers all of the features and offerings in the 2018 slash 19 Tiguan S. I hope you found this video useful and informative. It's time for me to get out of this 40 degree weather and go back down south. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?